Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another Cooking with Trish. We're starting this recipe at three hours before eat time because that is, well, technically it's like three and a half hours before eat time because there's a lot of like, there's a couple, there's a lot of prep and I'm filming and all that stuff like that. So it's about, well, it's supposed to be 3.30, it's like 3.45 now. So we're gonna plan to eat about seven o'clock um, and I am following Rose's pot roast recipe. And I definitely followed her recipe before. I feel like she has like really tasty and like relatively easy to do recipes, like to follow recipes. This one seems like really easy. That's what she says. It's a long cook time, but the actual like prep and stuff, like, I mean, it's a long cook time, but you don't really have to do much for three hours. So it's like the prep mostly. So if I can do it, We'll see. Then I feel like anyone can do it. But this is my first beef dish. Well, I did the Beijing beef, and that was a flop. But um, my husband loves red meat. I have been a little bit anti-red meat since um, becoming pregnant. Although, at the beginning, I really loved it, like meatballs and stuff. But I'm kind of warming up to it again. And this recipe looked so good. She literally like, melted off so much seasoning. Because usually when we cook our red meat, it's like, just cook it. I put A1 sauce on it. So this had a lot of like savory. It was very, like just falling off the bone type thing. There's no bones in these, I don't think. So, anyways, <laughs> wish me luck. I'm also gonna follow her garlic and mashed potato recipe, so I'll link both those below, um, because we love mashed potatoes and garlic mash is just everything. So, yeah, I like these set it and forget it type recipes, so I feel very confident. We'll see. I have my little thing at medium high, and I've actually never <laughs> done red meat myself, so. This should be interesting. So we're gonna put some olive oil in the pot. Okay. <laughs> this feels big, but we have really big steaks, so. All right, we're gonna just, I guess, do that with the olive oil. All right, so we're about to put butter in it, unsalted butter. So, we have like the perfect amount right here. And we're gonna just throw that in. It's hot. She said to have the pan hot, so. All right. Now we are gonna throw some steaks in. Just slide these bad boys in. Okay, one is in successfully. <laughs> and then, all right, big enough. So we're gonna do, she said five minutes on each side. This one cooks pretty quickly, so I'll keep my eye on it. So flipped it over and you're gonna do another five minutes. It smells really good. This is the roast beef chuck, chuck roast beef. We never had this before, but it's literally already falling off and it smells so freaking good. Now we are going to season, which is like my favorite part. I have all my ingredients here. Um, so I season from the heart. So you add all the dry seasonings first and I always just tend to go, oh, this, smells so good. this smells so good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball this. But we have a lot of garlic and onions. So I'm not gonna go too crazy with the onion powder and garlic powder. But it does call for that, so we're doing it. And then we are gonna put our paprika on there. We love a good paprika. Literally use this in like everything, which is so crazy because I would never think I liked it. So I'm just gonna Season that. There's a lot going in here, so I'm not trying to like over season. We finally got some thyme and rosemary. So again, these are like things that I've never really used before, but they make sense. On these steaks. This is my workout. This is my shake weight. Mm, it smells good though. Yum. <laughs> All right, so there's thyme, and then we also have rosemary, which I don't think I used in my last, like in my little soul food um, cooking. Oh, here, I guess you can put, well, I don't want to go too much, because you know, some more. Dang, that's not easy. All right, let's just do a little bit of this. Or no, you know what? I see disaster happening. Let's not do that. <laughs> I don't want to put too much on. All 
Mm. It's smelling so good though. All right, so. <laughs> Takes me a minute to season. Then we can find the celery salt. We found it at Whole Foods. It called for celery salt, so we measured it out. Pepper, and this is it for our dry seasoning. Mm. Yum, it smells delish. Okay, so then she put in the onion and garlic. There's a lot of onions, so I like, I like onion. You know what? I'm gonna just go put it all in. Why not? <laughs> go big or go home. And same thing with the garlic. She uses like a minced garlic, so I hope it's okay to use some fresh garlic. But we are going to garlic this up. Mmm. Gosh, I love, love, love the smell of fresh garlic. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never, I never cooked with fresh garlic or onion. I'm just like, mm. All right, so. I know beef broth and cornstarch are one of the last things we put in. It was kind of unclear when she put the bouillon and the Worcestershire sauce in. So, <laughs> we're gonna just, you know, and we're gonna find the bouillon cubes, the beef bouillon cubes, so I got this. Not really, it's kind of like thick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to put it like right on the steak because I think this is just like flavoring. So <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Okay, because again, I don't really see where she put it in. So please, please, please correct me in the comments. Like this is one time you guys can totally tell me like if I'm doing something wrong because like that's the only way I'll learn. So I don't know. I'm just putting it in there because everything kind of gets mushed together anyways by the broth. So I'm not too concerned like it's gonna go over everything I feel because <laughs> you don't mix anything really and then her Worcestershire sauce was in the description but again I didn't see her use it unless I'm just like an idiot and like went past it but there was only like a tablespoon of it so I don't think it's gonna be that drastic but I love this sauce so I'll put this over the steak I don't know we'll see okay so those are the only things that I was kind of didn't know about, I kind of was questioning, but yeah. All right. And then finally, we have our cornstarch. So we're gonna do this. She mixes it with a little bit of beef broth. So measure out like two tablespoons. Ooh, that would be two tablespoons, okay. <laughs> I'm just so bad at this, okay. And she does mix the broth. I say okay a lot because it like stabilizes myself. I'm like, okay, everything's okay. Okay. Mm. This looks like the bone broth she used. So there's the bone broth. We're gonna mix it. We're gonna do three cups of bone broth, but oh, you know what? It's gonna need a lot more than that. Let's see here. All right. I forget what cornstarch does. I know every recipe I use is like cornstarch for this. To make it fluffier, taste, I don't know, I want to make it fluffier. Oh, it's kind of making it mushy, it's kind of weird. Oh, weird, oh my gosh, what a weird consistency, okay. Hmm. I don't know y'all, it's kind of weird, it's kind of thick. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be. Should I put a little more in? I don't think you can have too much beef broth because you're putting three cups in, so. I think it's okay to kind of, unless it's making it thick, I don't know. Okay. It could be making the cornstarch kind of too thick, maybe? Oops. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what cornstarch does. I probably should know that. And I put it right on the steak. I don't know if that was a good idea. Okay. You know what? It's all going to mix in, right? It's all going to be fine. All right. And then the final step. <laughs> this looks like. This looks like just, I don't know, something that won't turn out. Oh my God, if I mess this up. So she says three cups, which I don't even know if it's gonna be three cups, let's see. And my oven is set to 325. All right, 
She just pours this in. All right, is that enough? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I feel like there should be more, but I'm not gonna overdo it. So now we are going to cover this and put this in the oven for three hours and that's it. So, our foil. One of our favorite dishes it was, is um, Moses' mom and mother-in-law's chicken recipe and we cover it like this, so. I'm really excited to do another one of these. So we're gonna cover this and put it in the oven now for three hours at 325. So while the potatoes are boiling, we are going to add in some fresh garlic. Now her particular recipe that I followed said you could add this, she didn't show this part of it, so we're gonna just put that in. Now what's cool about her mashed potatoes that I've never done before is put the chicken bouillon in with the water of the boiling potatoes, which is gonna be so delicious, but also she uses cream. I usually just use like milk with mine, but I like that she used this cream. And I got some real good heavy cream from Whole Foods, like the good stuff. Usually at Ralph's they just like have heavy whipping cream. This is like heavy cream. So I'm super excited to try this. And yeah, just put it over the garlic. And it's one cup. And she does bring it to like a simmer, I, they call it a simmer, but I always think that's like a boil, I don't know. And so she, yeah, for like three minutes, bring it, I should bring it up a little bit because she has it to a simmer. And then we are going to add in, oh, the fresh herbs. Rosemary and thyme, these are like the magic herbs that have been used in so many recipes lately. And I like never used them before, so. First time for everything. We are gonna strain these, so you know what? This is a time where I think I can open this up and get a little bit more out. Because you're gonna get all the flavors and then you're gonna strain it. So this actually doesn't stay in the cream. So I was kinda like, oh, that doesn't sound that good, but. All right, so that's our rosemary. Going to put our time, and she's like, you can put a lid on if you want to. Like, okay, <laughs> thought that was right, you know. Do some time in there. Okay, bring it up a little higher, and mix all that in. Oh, it does smell really, really good, actually. Yum. We're gonna bring this to a simmer. Bring it to a boil, shut it off, and now we are going to strain it. Now we have our heavy whipping cream, nice and hot, and I'm going to try and use this as a strainer. Let's see if it goes. Yeah, okay, that's working. So it's gonna catch all the herbs. There's still some garlic in there, but again, I think that's just for seasoning, so I think that's totally fine. Because there's the pan. You see all the garlic in there. So. I think I did a pretty good job of it. Put that back on here. It smells delicious. All right, so now we have this. We are gonna set aside and we're gonna add in the potatoes. Okay, so yeah, this is exciting. This is a big bowl potato. So I think I make really good mashed potatoes, but I'm really excited to try this because it has so much more flavor and seasoning. She puts a whole stick in there, but cuts it up. So I'm gonna do the same thing. That's like a stick, this is like double wide. I'm gonna put like little bits in, cause usually I put like the whole thing in, just like the chunk and it's kind of it gets chunky. So I'm gonna just put the cubes of butter in there and have them melt. She uses like a whole like blender with hers, but that seems like a lot for me to do cause I'm not good with a blender. Me, butter, like you can never have enough butter on the potatoes, but it does have the bouillon, so I'm excited to try that. So we're gonna put a little in at a time Okay, I'm gonna mash them. So mine might take a little longer because I mash them and they're probably not like as whipped. Like I'm so curious to know if anyone else does that little whip technique because 
it probably really works. Usually I'm just dumping like so much milk into these things, but we go a little bit at a time. Just put my whole all into this. All right. Looking so good already. Get some of these dry ones in here. We made a lot of kale. These are russet potatoes today. So I'll just keep mushing. I actually love mashing potatoes. And we are only like 10 minutes away from the pot roast being done, which is also super exciting. Mm. Getting all the mush. Yeah, she has a couple different recipes on her. This is Still Rose um, from Island Vibe Cooking. So I'll link below all of that. Also, we don't mind a little chunk. Like <laughs> sometimes I leave some extra chunks because me and my husband both like chunky potatoes. But the whipped is cool too. Like the whipped is what the picture is how she made them and that's what got me because then you feel like you're at a restaurant. So we don't want any of it, so leave the bowl. Don't leave the bowl. Mm. Okay, that looks so freaking good. Mm, mm -hmm. Tasting good too. All right, we'll add some more cream in there. Yeah, adding the cream in with it is like the way to go. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. They smell so freaking good. You can kind of mush it around. Mmm, that cream! Yes, 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 and the butter. Oh, ho, ho, ho. These are some creamy mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can ever go back to making mine how I do. <laughs> Just adding some milk and butter in it. But that bouillon, y'all, that bouillon, I think that is the secret to all secrets. All right. So now I'm just kind of smoothing it all together. Mm, I love the buttery chunks in it too. I might actually add one more buttery chunk to it. It doesn't need it, but I might add a little bit. Mm. These look so fire. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, we're gonna do one little chunk. Extra. Because butter is a secret to all good recipes. So we're gonna do a chunk there. And one more for good luck, of course. And then we'll just finish up with some the rest of the cream, which isn't much, but you know, the more cream, the better, always, in my opinion. And mash these up. And she had some butter on hers too, like kind of just dripping, so. We're gonna make them dripping. fact mashed potatoes are kind of like my favorite food ever <laughs> I like I used to just post my KFC before I like knew how easy mashed potatoes were to make I would just post my KFC I still like KFC potatoes but I mean can you even prepare I don't think so prepare compare I'm trying to get all of that goodness as much as I can. <laughs> All right, let's do a taste test with this because this is it. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. Okay, so now we're going to take the spoon and we're going to put some seasoning on it because everything's pretty much mashed. Do a little garlic powder. And then we're going to do a little salt. Pepper. And y'all, we're like five minutes away from this pot roast being done. 
This is perfect, perfect timing. For boiling and all that stuff like that for the potatoes, I would give it 30 minutes, so 30 minutes before the cook time is over, so. Just kind of lumping all that together, getting the butter moved around. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Making sure all the seasonings get moved around. Wow. I'm impressed. I impressed myself, and that's not easy to do because I'm pretty hard on myself. But these look super creamy, super delicious. And, yeah. We'll serve some pot roast on top of it. Okay, guys, big reveal time. Let's see how this goes. This is after three hours. I literally just set it in there. Take the tongs to get this going. Let's see. Because it's going to be hot. <gasps> Reveal time. Okay. Okay. Right? I don't really know what it's supposed to look like, but that looks like something. Let's get some forks and see if we can pull this apart. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think this looks good, but... She was like pulling hers apart. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Woo! I've never made meat that pulls apart like this and I'm really excited. <gasps> okay, can you guys see? I hope you guys can see it. My little hand in the way. I mean, it smells really good. Does it look good? I don't know. Is it gonna taste good? We'll see. But yeah, that pulled. It kind of just pulls apart. I think it's good, right? I don't know. Y'all will be the judge of that. So I'm going to serve this on top of potatoes. I'm going to keep pulling a little more. See if my hubby wants it pulled or if he wants his all together. I think it's kind of fun pulled, but, you know, with the potatoes. Mmm, with the sauce and the potatoes. Okay, we are going to plate and serve. Yum. Guys, I should do more of these close-ups, but look at that. Woo! Steaming, saucy, and it smells delicious. Mukbang time. Moment of truth, the taste test. I'm not gonna lie, like it does look and smell good, but it's like something that I feel like we, neither one of us would make. I mean, we don't make this much like sauce and stuff on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm nervous. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is it? It's really good. It reminds me of, yeah, like I had, like I had this before. Really? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. It is really good. It's something I've never had before. I've definitely never tasted something like this. Because <laughs> I love roast. Mmm. I never I had a roast. Mm -hmm. Is this considered a roast? A pot roast? Is this considered a pot roast? Yeah. Why? What makes it that? Mmm. I, I mean... To me, it just means like it's been cooked for hours in a sauce. Mm. Yeah, it's actually really good. I'm surprised. <laughs> I didn't think I would like it. Also, like there's like this cut of meat has like fat in it, mm -hmm. and it's so tasty. Oh my like, god! It's so, uh, you can see. Yeah, I like that it's like pulled apart like that. I think it's fun to eat. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of flavor. <laughs> What's that one? A potato? Mm hmm. Hmm. I mean, the potatoes were so good with the bouillon. I know, I didn't, try, I didn't get to try it before, but. No, but even now. Let me see. Mm hmm. The potatoes are so good. Yeah, I actually like really, really like this. It's something big different. I like this meat because it's like seasoned, it's like. Flavorful. I feel like meat can be like, so, especially red meat can be so tough. Can mm -hmm. taste the, is it rosemary or? Mm hmm. Yeah. Where did you taste on the steak? Uh, the mashed potato. Maybe I put too much in. <laughs> no. I didn't put a lot in. Okay, it's a good taste. I can, I can taste it. Really? I didn't know mm -hmm. if we liked those, like dry herbs or not. Napkin? Mm -hmm. I got you. Please. Mmm. Me too. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm actually gonna get you another one. 
Yeah. This just feels like a, a traditional, like, dinner that people would make for their family. And, like, we never had something like that. I feel like I wouldn't have eaten this maybe as a kid, but I feel like this is like, oh, you're having pot roast tonight. It's hearty. It's definitely, like, filling. <laughs> like, it's a lot of meat. Mm -hmm. It's a dish you would have in winter. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It's like cold. And, and when you're so hungry. I'm trying to pinpoint the flavors. Like there's so many. There's a lot in it. Because <laughs> most of the spices used, we know. Mm -hmm. Like we've used before. The only new one was celery, salt, mm -hmm. rosemary, and thyme. Now she used paprika, garlic, onion, salt, pepper. We used fresh onion, fresh garlic. Mm -hmm. Man, fresh potatoes. I really like the rosemary in it. Really? Yep. I'm kind of surprised. I think a lot of times it's something that goes with potatoes. Yeah, we never, we never seasoned our potatoes, so now we will start. Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to taste the potatoes to see if there's a good difference with the whipping cream. Or just the heavy cream. They seem to be more... Um, yeah, like more creamy. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but I mean, like you can kind of see it. They're more. Yeah, the consistency of it. It's really saucy. Like, do you think it's supposed to be the saucy? I like it, but do you think did I make it too saucy? Mm. Like I thought maybe I mean, it was cooked the full three hours. We didn't even like skip That's it. It's like when they serve with gravy on top. Mm. Mm hmm. It just depends on how much you want. You know, how much sauce do you like? That's so funny because I've never eaten gravy on my potatoes, but it actually does taste good, the sauce in the potato. Well, this does. Is this not what gravy tastes like? Oh, I've never had gravy. Yeah, no, I feel like in, in restaurants or when we order food, the gravy is like this thick, unknown mm -hmm. thing. It's like... It's like too much. Yeah. Yeah, this is like... It's like the gravy is like clear, you see through it, you see the... It's like our sauce on our rices, when we like the sauce on the rice. You see the spices, you see everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. This with potato. Mm-mm-mm. Steak and potatoes. <laughs> the meat is so good. Really? Mm-hmm. so crazy how wide of a world there is out there with food that I didn't even know. But it is like one of those things that get restaurants that you just don't get. I know we always compare to restaurants, but I would never like this at a restaurant. It'd be way too saucy for me. I wouldn't like the way they cook the meat. I don't know. I'm just like so picky now. It's like we really never go out hardly. Well, especially now because sickness and stuff. But mm. I'm gonna miss pregnancy. Why? It's been so relaxing. My day's consists of. Resting, emails, cooking, <laughs> snacking, TV. <laughs> it would be the same. You just have this little cute thing that... That's true. He's there. <laughs> I know. I feel like it's like this... People go on baby moons. I feel like I am on a baby moon every day. I'm like, oh, we could have like, have breakfast, watch TikToks. Well, that's good. Nap. <laughs> it's just been this great... Change of pace, and I love it. <laughs> well, our house is the best vacation place. Oh my god, going outside, even just going outside when I come my little bump dates and oh, our pool, just so nice. Driving around our neighborhood, walking around our neighborhood. Mm. Oh my god, this is oh, did I, <laughs> did I get me? I don't see it, it's so good. Oh, I was happy to like. Definitely better than our Beijing beef. <laughs> Fried beef was a fail. Roast beef or what? What is this? Pot roast. Pot roast is a hit. I mean, I think the idea of mm. fried beef, especially <laughs> like breaded beef. Mm -hmm. Like, no. He even said that. He's like, I know y'all like, you're going to fry your beef. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, people will do that when... <laughs> Like the beef expired, and then you cover it and deep fry it. Oh. 
I don't know about all that. Like if you have a fresh cut of meat. You don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also couldn't taste it. It just tasted like weird. and. Yeah. Mm. Now we have like three of these pieces of meat. Would you make this on your like, would you make the meat again just like by itself? Is it steak? Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Because uh. I, I love when Ooh. there's um, fat in the meat, like the actual, I just love the flavor of it and the weight. Yeah, you love red meat. You're definitely like a meat eater. Serious, so. Which is weird. Did we ever talk about you being a vegetarian? I was for 15 years. Which is so crazy. It's so crazy because you like love meat now. I just can never picture you as like a vegetarian. <laughs> Why did you start? I know why you stopped, but why did you start? Well, it was it goes hand in hand, I guess. Well, it was always ideological, not physical. You know, uh -huh. I didn't have a problem eating meat. And what about the animals? So. <laughs> well. That's how nature works. What? Animals eating animals. Well, vegans might disagree, but I don't think vegans are watching this video right now, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> or vegetarians. I get it. Like, I respect it. I get it. Vegans look great. I get it. But, I mean, but after being vegetarian, like, I don't eat as much meat. Like, it, it changes your diet. It changes your I feel like you like meat a lot. Like, I feel like you always want meat. I feel like I rarely want meat. I feel like you always want meat. No, but even then, it's not big amount or... Mm -hmm. like, like, it changes the amount. Like, they say that the healthy amount of meat is, like, the size of a deck of cards. <laughs> That's really? all you really need. Mm -hmm. So, it's really about... But, no, I don't... Like, just people that eat meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, what? Like, what would you have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Like, whatever you get, if there's a meat option, they'll get it with meat. You know, like... Mm -hmm. I guess a sandwich been, yeah. with meat or... A, McDonald's with meat or... <laughs> but McDonald's, is that real meat? Well, that's a different Does question. it count? <laughs> um, yeah, I've never been too much of a meat eater. Like, I like chicken. Like, I'll go for a burger, but yeah, I like things like... But I like things separate. Like, if I have pizza and meat or, like, sandwiches. I don't like meat on sandwiches, but I'll have, like, a peanut butter sandwich or grilled cheese sandwich, but, like, throw some meat on there? No. Or, well, like, Israeli food is, like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times... It's vegetarian, or you know, when I get falafel, when I get hummus, when I get so there's whole meals that have nothing to do with meat. Yeah, pasta, butter noodles, <laughs> no meat. Butter is butter noodles kosher? Yep. Wow. Oh my god, I'm so good. I ate my whole piece basically. And chow down on it. And I had a big thing of mashed potatoes, so I used mine as a thumbnail. So I like a Wow. This is like our first. I oh know we have breakfast, I guess. I was going to say it's like our first meal. But we hadn't had anything since breakfast. Like we were going to have a little snack it in there. It was early. Yeah. I knew we were working all day, painting, being physical. Well, for three ahead. hours, we've been smelling this. Right, <laughs> so it was like taunting. Maybe that's why you had a headache because you were like painting, so you're sniffing the fumes. But then you smelled this, like so it smelled good. So maybe you were just like hungry and the fumes and. I think my stomach was just like, hey, what's that thing we're smelling for three hours? No, oh, I know when you smell it in the house, it's like amazing. It did smell really good. Just filling it up the kitchen. Oh, so good. What did we have at our wedding? What kind of meat was that? Car tip. I don't know, we never... <laughs> it was so good when we did the taste test. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I um, That's all we had. Like, well, we had it at night, it just was cold. You mean after? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but at least we had it sometime. <laughs> that was... I'm crazy. For our anniversary, I want to see if they can make us like a little wedding cake. Because <laughs> we never got ours. Like We never really got to enjoy it. Sure they will. I mean, the chef is nice. We always see him when we go there, and he's always very nice. Yeah. Because you know you're supposed to save, like, the top tier, and then a year later you're supposed to eat it. 
Which like it would still be good in the freezer. I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm like we're not those kind of people that keep it for a year. I don't know. There's so many traditions that that one just sounds. You didn't know like most of the wedding traditions here. <laughs> you were like. It was just surprising. Are they different than Israeli? Yeah. They are? Like what? What would be like the biggest differences we had? In Israel, a wedding is like... I don't know. It's like going to a late night club. <laughs> <laughs> with what? a good dinner and... It's kind of like a party. Like people just... What did you think ours was? Not a party? <laughs> No, you have, I mean, talking like a rave, like... Oh, really? Yeah, oh. People are like sweating their shirts off, smoking joints, having... Really? Like, like a party, like people just... Which I, I don't like, like, if I don't, like... For me, like, I don't know, like, as our experience, I wanted to be there. Yeah, we were very present, both of us, we... To enjoy it, to remember it, to be sober in it, like not... Is it the same thing in Israel with the bride and groom just like... They don't get to dance, they don't get to sit, they don't get to eat, they're just like, it's like we had a line, like it was like basically a meet and greet line, yeah. which was kind of cool, because like we could go talk, because like how do you get to talk to everyone, but people like lined up to talk to us, which was kind of nice, so we were kind of like by our table, I had to change into my tennis shoes, I was just like, oh my gosh, but I mean, literally until the end, we were lined like up. whenever we stopped to stand, a line would fall. Yeah, which is cool, like that was really cool because everyone wanted to say hi which is awesome i mean we literally said hi to i think everybody i don't think there was anyone i didn't we spent more time talking to people than dancing was that how it is in israel like the bride and groom no they'll be like on the dance floor just getting they wasted <laughs> really and you guys don't have do you guys have like best man the maid of honor not really no do you don't have wedding parties i mean we didn't have a wedding party but usually you know you can't TikTok to people with like bridesmaids and groomsmen Maybe now they do because they copy everything from here, but not really. No. People we'll just show up, have the ceremony, have dinner, dance. And is it always Jewish ceremony there? Yeah. yeah. But there's like Jewish. wedding halls, you know? Right, you there's said like that. Places that that's all they do. They're just for Machines. That. So, and, it's, and it's, it's awful because like a young couple, instead of starting like... In Israel, the gifts are always money. You get money as a gift. Right. And it's very calculated. It's like you put <laughs> you put minimum like to cover the cost <laughs> of hosting you, you know. Not weird. So it's like whatever your plate cost, right? And then sometimes people add a bit more. I feel but, like here it's awkward to give money to people. Like here's but money. But at the end of the event, all the money goes to basically pay the wedding hall yeah i feel like here that'd be like kind of tacky i don't know i don't know like it's just weird to give someone like money i don't know because like wedding here they give gifts and like we, we didn't have a registry so like half the guests brought gifts half the guests didn't i was like a third brought gifts a third brought money which was like again we didn't ask for anything and a third to show up which I, I get all of it because like we didn't ask for anything we didn't have a registry we just you know wanted to have this like like celebration um, it's also like we had all walks of life there, so you can't like expect like I just didn't want anyone to like do anything. Like if they wanted to, cool. If not, you know. But I also think like you said, like when you're younger, it makes more sense. Like people moving into an apartment together, they need like a blender and a microwave and stuff. It's like I had all that stuff. So um, kind of why I was like iffy about a baby shower too. I was like I don't know. I just like I get it if you're like I don't know young. Yeah. And, so that's what I'm saying. In Israel, what sucks is. Instead of giving the money to the couple, it goes away for to cover the cost of the event, you know. Yeah, but the other option is to not have an event and just... No, you just have it more um, independent, like you do it by yourself, but some people find the space, they do, you know, yeah. instead of going to... I would do grand. If someone, like, were to offer me a million dollars or a million dollar wedding, I'd be like, I think it's a million dollar wedding. Because, like, you want that experience, like... To remember like I loved our wedding I remember I, lo I love the memories but like I wish it was more of an experience but it was you know I said this. it was perfect yeah it was good I mean what more can you <laughs> pack in that time you know no, what I mean? the time yeah, of the nothing. wedding was the time of the wedding well there wasn't we started two hours late but <laughs> not really not we did definitely did we 100% started late but not two hours 
two hours. And trust me, I was up there by myself. I was like, okay. Yeah. When was it supposed to start? 5.30? It's like 5.30 and I don't think we started till like 7.30 for real. Like I remember looking at the clock because I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Wow. You were down chit and so you were just amongst the people. I was down entertaining the troops. <laughs> the, we got so lucky to have it when we had it and that, like, no one got sick because we talked and hugged every single person. Like, And thank was God crazy. I wasn't pregnant then. Like. Yeah. That would have been bad. So it was it was like perfect timing because like of course we were trying before the wedding to you know have a baby too. But um, I mean literally I think I got pregnant either like the night of the wedding or a couple of days after the wedding. Like it's so nine months right. So you're just like it's so spot on from the wedding. We got married December 11th. So do the math. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean it was it was nuts. That's about like a sign where it's like all the universe was like coming together. It's like okay. You elevated to wife status that I thought I'd never achieve, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. Oh, babe. How are you feeling? <laughs> good. That was a lot. It's also like super like heavy, which is like good. Yeah. This is but like, <laughs> after this, married at first sight. <laughs> can't move much after this. Oh my god. How'd you feel? You like it? Yeah, so I, I mean, I finished all the mashed potatoes. I put more than I thought I would eat. Yeah, that's what you never do usually on the mashed potatoes. I always eat way more. I had a lot of mine though. Well, what do you rate this meal? <laughs> this is this is its own 10 out of 10. <gasps> 10 out of 10? How can I get it better? Wow. You said maybe you would add potatoes into the roast. No, we were talking in general. You said that... She has carrots some, sometimes. Yeah, and I said I'm not a big fan of <clears throat> carrot. Me neither. I would do potatoes. Potato on potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well this has been... Babe, I love these meals together. I feel like real <laughs> husband and wife just sit down and having a meal. I don't know, maybe. And the little baby! She has been moving. She's been feeling good. <laughs> I didn't have to be on my feet too much for this recipe, so she feels good, relaxed. It's coming, she's coming so soon. And if we get induced like a week early, like I was just thinking like that, <laughs> that's even sooner than we anticipate. It'll be faster then. Cause that's one thing about the wedding I remember is like knowing the date, but having the time up to it. Yeah. And then suddenly, like the closer they, it gets, the faster it moves. Except this is scarier because, like, I actually have to do a lot of work. <laughs> it's no, it's gonna be easy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the closer it gets, I'm like, I'm not worried, but I'm just like, I just don't know what to expect. Exactly. So just don't worry about it. But it's like, it's just like, even the doctor said, it's like, it's moving, it's gonna happen. Nothing, <laughs> That's what scares no me other. though when he said that. It's like, there's, there's nothing you can do. Right. So it's not like you have options. If you have options, then you worry about should I do this, should I do that, should I? No. Well, there's you just, lots of There'll outcomes. be a moment. You'll push it out. I'm not even. Oh, I guess I should be worried about the pushing. I should say I wasn't worried about the pushing, but it's more like I'm worried about like what the la the labor feels like. But you're so strong, so it's like. <laughs> Am I, babe? I'm so. Yeah. No, you had like COVID. You had pain that was crazy, and you didn't even cry once. You didn't even. I was pretty. Like, you have a strong tolerance. I'm usually like, ah, okay. but I'm... Just gonna be like that. And now you know how to meditate and how to like... Meditation just... has helped. Even when I get blood work, or what did I get done recently? Oh, when, <laughs> it wasn't anything, but when I forgot to pee in the cup at the doctor's and then I had to get my blood pressure. And I was so nervous because, you know, this late, if you have like high blood pressure, they take you to the thing. So I was like, oh, wow, I'm getting stressed because I didn't pee in the cup and my blood pressure is gonna be high. And then it was like the lowest it's ever been. It was like 104. And I was just like, oh, because you know what? I just like, I just like, I just breathe. It does help. Yeah. I think it, I need to start practicing more. It will help more. with the pain too, you know. Right, it's just, just gonna be outer to body work. just to go. Mm -hmm. To focus on breathing and not on the pain. I want to be like that girl. I know it's controversial, but that labyrinth girl, when she was like in labor and felt the pain before she had the epidural, she's like, because he's like, can I make a joke? She was like, no, not right now. But she was so really calm. She was so calm about it, even before she had the epidural. I was like, God, I want to be that strong. You are. Because she just was like, not right now, not right now. And she was still like really like nice. I just don't want to be one of those who like, get out, shut up. <laughs> Whatever you feel like, it's fine. Like, no, I don't want to feel like You don't need to worry about it. Those that. people are annoying. It's like, ugh. 
No, but that's what I mean. Like, nobody judges you at that moment. It's whatever you're feeling. It doesn't matter. Like, however you let it out. You know what I mean? If you want to scream, you want to be upset, you want to be whatever. It's, again, it's such a short amount of time. Yeah. I don't then, really scream, though. Like you said, then, I don't really yell. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I yeah. never see you, like, experience pain outwards. Yeah. You experience it inwards. Yeah. So, you know. And there are not going to be too many people. So, I'll be... I'll be there. I'm excited. We gotta find something that maybe I'll need a little like a little squishy. Okay, yeah, some more of the You're my squishmallow. I just will be so excited. But I know it's just gonna be like I just don't know what to expect and that's I think that's the craziest part. That's why like I feel like a second baby they always say it's like easier because you like kinda know what to exactly. expect and Yeah, definitely. But this one is like, okay, my is my water gonna break? Am I gonna get induced? Am I gonna do it naturally. Am I going to get the epidural in time? Can I take the epidural? Can I, like, C-section? Like, what's it going to be? What's written. You know, it's like in the... It is written. Like, what was it? Yeah. What was it I think it was slum in dog? the... Slum. Yeah, it's like, like, all of that already happened. It's already there. Now right. we're just going to go through it. Okay. With the epidural, without, whatever, whatever it is. With the what? Epidural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will... Happen. The second the baby is in your hands, then everything that happened disappears. So yeah. Oh my god. So that's all you have to focus on. It's like, uh, little baby. Oh my god. It's so crazy to think about. She's gonna be so cute. I know. You're gonna hear her cry for the first time. And like, oh, hear a little voice. Oh, I know. I just can't wait to see her because like, you can feel her and like. It's I just excited to see what she looks like and how she acts and <laughs> like her whole life, you know what I mean? Like how she changes. Um, I'm a baby. Just to see her face. And we'll always have a part of us, we'll always be connected forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Enough mush potatoes. <laughs> and when do I stop eating? Like I know you can't eat before delivery. When do you stop? Like during, probably when labor starts? Well, it depends. I mean, if they induce you, then you know exactly. But if yeah, just get you a lot of jumbo juice. <laughs> I don't want anything in my body if I'm pushing out. <laughs> you just have to drink water. And you might as well. I don't know juice. if you can do that even. Yeah. What? I don't think you drink water. You better ask. I don't know. You gotta stay <sighs> hydrated. Did we print out that birthing plan? I gotta fill that out. I'm doing a birthing yeah. plan. <laughs> <laughs> three page essay. Did you see it? No. Oh, but it so. is like three pages. But that's pretty short. Like, yeah. Our doctor was making fun of it. <laughs> he's like, you gotta write an essay to give birth. He's like, you don't have to do that. He is so chill. Like, that's one thing about our doctor. He's literally so chill. Always tells me, because like, last time I was like, I'm getting a little nervous about this labor delivery. He's like, no, I always tell people to get nervous about raising kids. He goes, labor delivery. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. more about... Worry about the after, not the. <laughs> I know, which makes me feel good. Like that, that feels good. And I like when people have been through it. Like our nurse too. She has like two kids, and she's been through like she got her C section. Like they've been through it, and they're just. They've seen hundreds of babies. Yeah. Born. Oh, so excited! All right, guys. <laughs> that was a lot of chit chat. A lot of that. I mean, if we had more time, we would have told you the name, but. <laughs> Next <gotta> time. <laughs> Next time. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you to my beautiful husband for having dinner with me tonight. Thank you for this meal. Of course. Oh my God. I'm like a chef now. Full for days. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys in the next video. Mazel tov, Kolchaim. Shana tova. What did my dad say at the wedding? What was the one I never know? Kol tu. What does that mean? All the best. I never heard that one. Kol tu. Kol tu. Shalom, Lalatov. Tadaha. 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 Tadaha.